Hello everyone, we're back covering the Lebanese Chess Championship 2022. So uh, it's a bit different actually from the previous edition, which we've also covered on this channel. Um, so it's basically a Swiss tournament, a big Swiss tournament. Uh, there are 52 players, I think, 26 boards, so we have two players. And um, the way people qualified for this was uh, through various regional events and uh, some youth championships and some were invited. So without further ado, let's dive right into the games. So we have 26 boards, so of course I'm not going to deeply analyze all of the games. For the first few rounds, we're going to deeply analyze a few boards. For the first round, actually only one board. And uh, later on, as the, as the tournament gets heated up, of course, we're going to analyze more games. So uh, for now, let's start off with the first game which we'll deeply analyze so we'll f analyze this game very deeply and the remaining 25 games we'll go through them very quickly for the first round so let's go okay so we have d4 knight of six knight of three by the way amr um, uh, he's won the lebanese championship i think three four times a lot <laughs> and he first won it at the tender age of 15 which was uh, and still is a record for this um, and he's facing off against Antoine a teammate of mine so uh, let's see how this game went right along so we have d4 knight of six knight of three d6 okay so this is obviously a bit of a weird move to, to uh, against the queen spawn opening so you have the possibility now of transposing either into the peers after if white plays e4 and knight c3 which is what happened in the game or you can later uh, or you could uh, theoretically theoretically transpose into some king's indian defense as well so offers both um, both ways so here actually um, if we go knight c3 g6 and e4 which is what happened in the game you can see that this directly transposes to the peers which can arise from the normal move order we have which is the following so this is the normal move order for the peers so they transpose into the peers which Antoine has been playing uh, for a while now and bishop e3 now this bishop e3 move I want to talk about it a bit it's a very um, it's a very nice way of uh, meeting the peers I feel because this move I think was recommended by Wesley So in his course uh, meeting, not meeting 1e4, playing with 1e4 um, his 1e4 repertoire course um, great course by the way um, so the, the idea here is you want to go for a 150 kind of attack which Amr goes for but without playing f3 which is normal in the 150 which prevents knight g4 and stuff like that but it turns out that the knight also has some useful functions to play. So it's a very unique and clever twist on the standard 150 attack you find against the peers. Now, uh, Antoine here castles, which is a normal move. Perhaps castling into it, <laughs> so we'll see that later. But uh, the question is what happens after knight g4, which is a very normal move, of course. And um, a very appealing move. So after knight g4, white just goes bishop f4, plays queen d2, castles, and any e5 break isn't so uh, worrisome. You just take, and uh, you can sometimes go for a good endgame as white, which we'll also see at a later point. Or uh, you could simply avoid the endgame and just uh, play from there, playing some bishop g3 or something. Depends on the position. And when e5 is played. But in general, this is quite a good position for white, and black isn't achieving much by going knight g4. So castles, queen d2, standard fair, and now knight g4. Now again, I don't really like knight g4, I feel it's a bit over-optimistic. I would much prefer here to see h6, intending to go for quick queenside expansion with b5, c5. And you'll actually see in the game that Antoine's, uh, um, Antoine's big problem in this game was the fact that he couldn't get the queenside attack going. So, um, yeah, we have... Uh, should have played a6 by the way a6 is something in the peers that I think I have a study on it on leeches It's something I've discovered a very long while ago and now actually engines start recommending it So they're picking up to truth dog theory 
All right, so knight g4, bishop g5, of course, very natural. Again, bishop f4 is a possibility, but there isn't much of a difference. Bishop g5, and now a big mistake, not a big mistake, but an inaccuracy, definitely, a dubious move, f6. Now, f6 does have the added benefit of being able to play e5 at a later stage, but it's just too weakening, and Amr immediately exploits that with this move. Instead, better was h6, and after bishop h4, which Amr probably would have played because I saw that he was like basically avoiding the f4 square. So, bishop f4 is of course fine, but bishop h4 is an interesting move, and after c6, b5, um, black has some chances to drum up counterplay. Now, white of course remains better, as in most positions in the peers, um, if white plays w well in the opening, but there are some good chances, good counter-attacking chances, black gets the type of game he wants, uh, chances for both sides. Instead of 6, a bit weakening, bishop c4 check, well not a bit, <laughs> rather weakening, bishop c4 check, king h8, and now white goes for the surprising bishop e3, which honestly from Amr, uh, it's very shocking, he really loves the bishop pair, so I'm quite shocked he played something like that. Um, yeah, oh whoops, <laughs> okay, so bishop e3. Um, instead, of course, just bishop f4, and now maybe he was afraid of some e5, maybe, but here again we see what I was talking about earlier, you can just trade everything and go for this endgame, and here you have h3, long castles, and you're very well developed while your opponent is not, so, so white is just doing splendidly here, and even after e5, I'm not sure there are alternatives apart from taking, but still, like, taking is quite good. Now, Amr perhaps uh, seeing the rating differential didn't want to enter into an endgame, but this endgame is very pleasant. And, I mean, giving up the bishop pair like this, mm, kind of tough for me to appreciate. But, uh, actually, there is a concrete line which we'll see, as you can see from the right side here, there are a lot of exclamation marks. So, both sides played really accurately here. So... Actually, yeah, so maybe Amr calculated this line and that's why he gave up the bishop pair, but still, the, the line isn't so great for white. So actually, um, Antoine finds the very, very amazing uh, knight c6, which is just a developing move, and actually it has a deeper point, which we will see later on. Protecting the queen is important, remember that. Um, and yeah, just a normal developing move and puts pressure here, prepares or... Uh, uh, it doesn't prepare, of course. It, it just solidifies e5. Uh, but yeah, overall a great move. h4, of course, very principled, going for the kingside attack. No need to castle just yet. And preparing h5 ideas. And black does splendidly to prevent that. Now it's not so easy to uh, continue white's attack, because like g4, you just take. No problems there. So white castles, intending to... Uh, just uh, get the king to safety and protect the center and maybe bring, bring the rook in, which is what happens. And king h7 is a very great move, protecting the tender spot, which might come under attack at some point. And uh, yeah, overall a very good defensive move. And also it has an offensive idea, of course, just winning the queen right away. And not only that, not only is winning the queen... Uh, the threat, but there is a deeper threat which occurs later, you can still play bishop h6 even if it doesn't win the queen. So after ki king b1, bishop h6, not now, but uh, we'll see in the variation, a move later, is actually a very good idea because it kind of gives problems for the queen and it lets the bishop perhaps get access to good squares. So instead, uh, Antoine goes for a um, very bad move here, knight a5, which uh, almost loses the game basically because the problem is Antoine's plan here is to go knight a5 and slowly like play c6 b5 a6 b5 but this plan is just too slow because now white has uh, the ability to go for a very quick uh, very quick kingside attack now perhaps Antoine also thought that getting the bishop of this diagonal would be good and while theoretically it is like in principle, actually in this position, getting the bishop to e2 helps white prepare g4, which is the only move white has to open up the position. So, um, on the king side. So, this is 
really helping white. So knight e5 is a bad move. So bishop e2. Now we can see the alternative to knight e5. It's e5. Again, reading it set. Now you might think, wait, there's this kind of action going on. So how is e5 a good move? Let's see. D takes e5, and now you don't go for... Of course you don't go for this because you lose the queen. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, of course you don't go for this because you lose the queen. But what about f takes? Whoops, f takes. Well, knight g5 check, and it's g2 to the g. Of course you can't go here, you just lose the queen. And if you go here, there's this. So completely losing. So bishop h6 instead shows the point of king h7 very well. Now the white queen only has two squares and both have their own problems. Queen d3 allows d takes e5 and now you see the point of knight c6. It's amazing, it protects the queen on uh, d8. And um, what else, what else? Ah, queen e2. Now f takes e5 is a possibility because the queen is pinned to the knight on f3. So... Uh, so that's uh, that's why e5 is such a great move here. Instead, knight a5, bishop e2, and now still going for this plan. I gave this a dubious mark, but already I feel like white is almost, black is almost lost. a6, and now knight h2, preparing g4, and now bishop d7, far too slow. Um, you don't have the luxury of time to play this, but again, I can't suggest much. Maybe, perhaps, uh, maybe, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps bishop h6 could have been tried. Um, let's let's uh, bring back the arrow here so bishop d7 and now g4 and now it's game over let's see how Amr puts the finishing touches here because it's completely lost gets the rook to g1 I thought he brought this rook but okay and now this is a cute maneuver intending bishop h3 to activate the bishop which is what happened and here he wins the the sideline knight on a5, which was the problem for white, uh, for black. So, <laughs> yeah. And now the game just, just stands in spectacular fashion. <laughs> so overall, um, quite a, quite a performance by Amr. Very nice attacking game. Um, Antoine had his chances. Could have seen, uh, could have seen much more from this game. But unfortunately, it uh, did not go uh, Antoine's way, and uh, the game was just uh, a quick victory for Amr. Alright, next up. So now remember, um, I have the computer analysis now, because these games will be quick. Quick. So by the way guys, I recorded, uh, <laughs> I recorded these videos yesterday, um, but... I did not record with sound on. <laughs> so I have, I've actually kind of rehearsed for today because yesterday I didn't record with sound on. <laughs> now I'm uh, yeah, I'm just making sure that the sound is working fine. <laughs> All right. So we have this game. Let's try to maybe I can do a bit of memory test for myself. Try to remember what happened in the game. Yeah, this game um yeah, I remember. So, th this is called the Godiva variation of uh, of the Sicilian defense. Godiva fans, shout out to you. <laughs> and uh, here, actually, there is the best way to respond is probably knight b3. This is the theoretical approach. Knight takes c6 isn't too bad. Now, the thing that happened this game, White gets a bit of an okay setup from the start, but he misplays it a lot later on and. Uh, the dragon bishops just just infiltrate into white's position and uh, and uh, completely wreck white's position so knight c3 d6 still relatively okay relatively okay and now f3 kind of weakening maybe you could have castled here i don't know but f3 kind of weakening and now you can see like the engine starts to prefer black oh by the way guys of course this is low depth stockfish we have we had the computer analysis here but uh, of course it's not deep analysis like the first game we saw so there may be some slight errors and of course i haven't taken a look at the games as much as i did the the games i'm deeply analyzing so just take that into consideration so castles 92 and now you can see <laughs> the outlines of tragedy <laughs> the outlines of tragedy are starting to come forth 
So you can see here the bishop is quite active. This bishop is quite active. It's kind of some sniper bishops here. And uh, white really doesn't have a good plan, right? I, ca I can't see a good plan for white. So, um, so yeah, this isn't uh, this isn't quite good for white. You can see here the weaknesses. Black probes for the weaknesses. Knight d7, very good move. Intending to go for these squares. And we'll zip through a bit here. And here the engine doesn't really like queen a6 for whatever reason. Um, ah, yeah, there was a point in the game. Let's see if we can find it quickly. Yeah, here. Um, here. No, a bit later. Yeah, queen h4 was a mistake. Actually, knight c1 was cute. In the sense that if black plays something like this, you have a funny tactic. Actually, I have this here. And of course, white is winning. So black would have to parry this tactic. So knight c1, seemingly a very passive move, comes with an actual threat. So yeah, that could have been tried. F6. And... It's unclear why the engine like doesn't like black all that much at some points. Probably some brilliant way for white to defend, but it's not happening. And here he just loses the exchange and game is over. So overall it's like the standard way you lose to an FM <laughs> in the uh, in the Sicilian. You just get uh, positionally outplayed. So what you need to do is study some uh, theoretical lines, try to go for a um, at least a bit of an aggressive position as white. Or if you want to play positionally, you either have to be super strong positionally, or you have to at least like know some lines with a clear plan. The problem with this line, while it may be fine theoretically, there is no clear plan for white. So as a human, you're going to suffer badly against a strong player. Next up, we have this game, and this game was a big crush for. Uh, for Antoine, again the Sicilian as well, but here something strange occurred, okay, so this is relatively normal, perhaps going for this kind of stuff that Magnus plays sometimes, but now yeah, this is the weird part, I don't know why not bishop g7, like e5 isn't even a threat, you have knight takes, knight takes e5, so knight g8 was a bit of a weird one, uh, bishop c4, queen a5, and now you can see like why it just has a big lead in development. Now, funnily enough, knight g8 is like kind of the Brooklyn variation in the in the Aliyachen, so it's not completely lost, but uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's not play like this as black. So knight f3, bishop g7, castles. Um, I think theoretically even long castles is possible, but no need to. Give your opponent chances and now e6. Big mistake. When you see this kind of structure, the dragon structure, um, actually, this kind of structure, the dragon structure with the fianchettoed bishop, never play e6. Here, because it weakens too many squares, and we'll see what I mean by that. So it weakens this square, weakens here, weakens here, knight b5 is coming, which is which happens in the game. Instead, you just play d6, and you also get to develop your bishop in that way. So here, after d6, it still would have been a game. The engine only gives a plus one advantage, and the position is completely unclear. Um, so this plus one advantage doesn't mean a lot. So just a completely, uh, I wouldn't say completely normal <laughs> game, but it's a game. But after e6, the, the weaknesses on the dark squares will tell a dark tale. <laughs> So a3, very interesting move, trying to prevent knight b4, preparing b4 as well, interesting move. Um, a6, preventing knight b5, and now rook e1, preparing some of these ideas, Mora-esque ideas. So Mora players are well aware of rook f1, b5, and now bishop d5, which isn't really a sacrifice of course, because after e takes, takes, thus you have d6. A standard Mora... Um, move. So here, uh, knight e7. Black is trying desperately to castle, but 
why it isn't time to prevent that king f7 you lose to a cute tactic very nice game by Antoine Assis so this game um, yeah it was some weird trump with some kind of pawn structure stuff going on yeah yeah d5 I don't like in principle because you don't have the dark squared bishop and usually in these Benoni esque positions or Benoni positions you get a strong dark squared bishop to attack the d6 point but with the way this uh, went on no not happening uh, let me just check how well we're doing on time so about 20 minutes in 20 minutes in we need to speed up a bit I guess so um, d5 yeah so without the dark squared bishop I don't like playing like this and you have this weak light squared bishop so yeah, e3 is a bit passive as well perhaps something like e4 could have been tried the engine recommends d6 which is okay just preventing the development of this guy interesting move let's follow the engine line a bit yeah some wacko stuff here difficult for a human to play especially you feel like this pawn will eventually be lost but yeah more normal maybe just e4 or something e3 is a bit passive and here was a chance to actually do this which is usually something you want to avoid but seeing as how you already traded one pair of minor pieces so usually usually you want to avoid this because you just give your opponent the bishop pair and actually this rook uh, b8 thing helps black um, but the idea here is that you're able to get knight c4 quickly you can just play it now actually knight d2 knight c4 protect the sensitive spot attack this spot and white's bishop isn't really finding a lot of useful squares you can only always pick, uh, kick it out with g4 and if black wants to play a5 to be able to have a better scope for the dark squared bishop then the light squared bishop won't be able to access those squares so um yeah there was this possibility unfortunately um, white didn't find that and eventually black was able to break through black has all of the trumps in the position good uh, all of these good pieces and white just isn't doing anything like where is white's advantage where is white's plan again similar to the joseph abirashid game against faisal khairallah so now here you're kind of uh, yeah, you're kind of lost either ways <laughs> either way so if you take you're lost because this file opens up and if you don't you're going to get uh, mauled on the queen side which is what happened in the game so castles b4 knight a4 and now here you just lose a pawn actually by force and that's all she wrote from here on out um, Abdul Aziz does a good job to convert this. This also is like a weakening move, g3. Not a fan of that, but of course white is lost. And he tries to go for something here. Somehow the engine doesn't like this. Because of... Ah! Ah, whoa, he missed this. Wait, didn't this occur in the game? This occurred... Something similar occurred in the game. So let's try to figure out why the engine doesn't like this. Of course, something like this would lose. Um, yeah, actually, I haven't. Uh, I didn't take a look at this. Ah, maybe something like this. But you're still not trapping. Ah, you can then play this. Uh-huh. Wow, that's a bit difficult to see though. Anyway, so he plays knight to h6 check, and now the problem is you're losing the queen eventually. Or getting mated like this. And here is a nice way to pick up the queen. The only move, you can't go here. The only move is to give up the queen. So interesting. So Mughni uh, had a chance there. All right. Now we go to Mr. Akram, Dr. 1000 IQ, <laughs> the fan favorite. 
So let's see this uh, game. From what I remember, he played a in Cato Benoni, yeah. And uh, yesterday when I, I was recording and uh, talking to myself basically because <laughs> there was no sound, um, I was decrying the, <laughs> the Fincato Benoni. I don't like the Fincato Benoni guys, but hey, it got, uh, it got Akram a nice advantage. The problem with the Fincato Benoni, I just feel the bishop is misplaced. And also I feel like there are so many better ways to meet the Benoni. But uh, hey, of course it gives an advantage for white, undeniably. So, uh, and yeah, by the way, just knight d7, very questionable move. As a Benoni player here, you have to play e6, try to open up some files, try to make use of your position. Knight d7 is just blocking in your bishop and giving you all sorts of problems. Now, when I used to play the Benoni, I used to play like this because I didn't understand the strategic concepts very deeply. Of course, I'm talking way back, but uh, yeah, it's good to be aware of these early on. So castles, a6, and a4. Now, Akram plays the normal Benoni moves and he kind of delays them a bit. But he eventually gets some strong knights on the queen side and opens up the queen side and wins. Which is a good plan in the Benoni. But this bishop d2, queen c1 is a bit, uh, rook f1, a bit slow. But uh, of course it's fine. Now this maneuver I, I kind of don't like and like at the same time. Prepares b4, it's a nice maneuver. But perhaps more natural was just to play something like this at some point. Though wait, the bishop is always on d7. Ah, the bishop is, yeah, if the bishop is always on d7, there's no need to give up this bishop for this one. You could, theoretically, but... Yeah, okay. What Akram did is, of course, quite fine. And here he gets, a, you look here, yeah, this is going to crash. This is going to crash eventually. And this is what happens. So c5, when c5 is in, yeah, that's over. And here his opponent resigned, of course, down in exchange, and uh, the position is collapsing. Paul Assar against Mahdi was a very, very intriguing game, actually, because Paul had reasonable chances to, uh, to create something out of the opening. So Mahdi goes for an aggressive setup against the King's Indian attack complete queenside dominance without even castling and now he goes for the full uh, full queenside attack now the problem with this move if you play normally as white you're not going to do well but the problem with this move is of course you just open up the center and the thing is here you have this move c4 now i've seen this in some uh, grandmaster games uh, of course like black isn't losing or anything but black gets the worst position here so if white knows uh, their stuff, they can really punish this kind of uh, uh, this kind of over optimistic play by uh, black. But he did not. He played e5. Closing down the position is exactly what black wants. Because now black just doesn't castle, and he doesn't in this game. And he goes for the full queenside attack. So this is what happened. White is still playing the standard maneuver as if like he's pre-moving it. <laughs> OTB, but um, yeah, of course, that can't be recommended as white, so. And still going for bishop f4, and then later he goes knight g4. Of course, this isn't warranted. Black isn't cast at king, uh, king side, and the queen side is getting completely destroyed. c4 is coming. You might think the queen side is closed, but no, c4 is coming to open up the position. And uh, that means that black isn't doing, uh, uh, white isn't doing well at all. And knight g4 just falls for a tactic basically after g5. Of course, if you retreat, I just take and you're going to get attacked. And if you play, um, if you take, which is what happened, you just lose a piece. Both pieces are attacked. So he tries this, but of course this is just lost. Just down a piece. Not much to discuss here. So played on till mate. And mate. Okay. Khalid against Bashar. Um, uh, what, what occurred? Oh yeah. They went into an end game where Khalid had all the trump cards and uh, the end game seemingly wasn't like so bad for black but 
yeah, it was just completely losing, in fact, because of position considerations, which we shall discuss. So, we have this kind of stuff, similar to the um, Cambridge Springs. Uh, no, that, this is, I guess, technically a, a triangle setup. And down here you have an over, uh, again, over optimistic kind of move, bishop b4, thinking like you can pile up pressure as in the Cambridge Springs here, but actually you just liquidate everything and you go into a losing uh, endgame, which is what happened. So a3, trying to kick the bishop out. Of course the bishop doesn't have to move because this isn't really a threat, so it doesn't move. But now after rook c1, this becomes a threat. So I think he should have retreated to e6, um, e7, but actually he takes here. Actually retreating to e7 has its own problems, but taking here also has its own problems. Now again here perhaps not necessary to go into the endgame, but because after you go into the endgame, if you just look here, it should be completely losing. Now maybe against a strong... Uh, a super strong defender like uh, I don't know Carlson <laughs> you might not be able to win this if you're not a super GM and, uh, and this is uh, one heck of a useless statement of course you're not going to. <laughs> but you get my point right so it's difficult to win perhaps if your opponent defends very well but I mean technically speaking why shouldn't this be lost look at these pawns the bishop is locked in you have the bishop pair your king is a bit more active you have potential possibilities uh, potential possibilities uh, I'm one for redundant redundancies today <laughs> so you have pos the possibility to just open up the center and blast open the position so yeah it's a bit uh, it's a bit strange what white went for uh, black went for and takes here and knight f6 is a cute move trying to fork here but it won't make much of a difference uh, Khalid does well to prevent any e4 stuff and here yeah you just play b5 eventually and the game plays itself there were some inaccuracies by Khalid perhaps he wasn't completely winning but now it's a different story and mate and next up a big upset uh, Mahmoud Masanani 2000 rated losing to 1300 Mark Yusuf Karam. Now, I think Mark Yusuf Karam is a youth champion, um, which makes, of course, his rating uh, <laughs> sort of uh, not, th it doesn't tell th the full story. His rating, he's probably underrated if he's a youth player, um, especially beating someone like Mahmoud Masarani. And lo look at the way he beat him. So particularly impressive um, so yeah I think what happened here ah yeah it was some kind of same-ish uh, Kings Indian and Mahmoud here kind of combined systems and it didn't really work out work out well so he wanted to go for the a6b5 system so he should have played it immediately combining it with h5 um, like I guess maybe he was scared of some bishop h6 stuff but bishop h6 is never really um, a like a big problem because you can just take and after queen h6 like you can just uh, live with that position because queen g7 is never really such a such a big threat you just go rook g8 there so this idea by the way is known from the Peart's defense a similar idea occurs where you just let black uh, play bishop h6 and you don't even care um h5 and knight h3 and now he goes for this a6 b5 stuff and yeah white is just playing normally and black doesn't get a footing in this game and it's quite difficult to see like how will black play white has like such amazingly good pieces and a nice center and he's fine on the king side and potential to go for a queen's king side attack uh, he's fine on the queen side and potential to go for a king side attack which is kind of what he does uh, which is basically what he does and uh, yeah so i'm not seeing how black can justify what he's doing and look like you have to go queen h7 that's so ridiculous like what's the queen doing there and nice move here also 
eyeing the queen, not retreating to some other square, and keeping an eye on c4, of course. And yeah, here you see a 4 and a 5 is coming. And uh, perhaps a nice uh, discombobulating move by Mahmoud, trying to get some of this stuff going, but <laughs> actually. Uh, yeah, you can't even like, for example, go to h6 there because you have a five. So actually, uh, Mark actually has a very good idea in mind, and he goes for this. And <laughs> now this bishop is ridiculous. This bishop isn't going to do anything. This knight struggling to find a footing in the game. And what is this queen? <laughs> and here he starts his attack e6, blasting open the position. Very nice, showing very good attacking understanding. And he had knight e6, so the point is of course this wonderful checkmate, amazing, amazing play by Mark. And look here, he plays rook f2, um, uh, defending against the mate and attacking the queen. <laughs> so now queen c6, he doesn't even care, it's defended as well. And yeah, it's just game over. Look at the graph, just amazing, an amazing game. And now we have um, Sharif against Muhammad. So a bit of a topsy-turvy game. Another upset, by the way, and a, a 1300 player beating a, uh, a 2000 rated player. So let's see what happened here. From what I remember, something in the opening. Now bishop g5 is already weird. You just go knight c3 or knight f3 or bishop e2 here. All are possible against this... Uh, this modern set, uh, modern variation of uh, the Scandinavian. Actually, it goes into the martial variation of the Scandinavian. And yeah, going for some kind of um, Trompovsky ideas. Bishop d7. And now, yeah, knight d5 is just over optimistic. Going for this kind of stuff doesn't really work here because you always have like bishop e6 and your. Uh, your pawn on d4 is weak, and actually black is able to castle quickly and put your king in some danger if your queen is here, which is what happened. So bishop g7, uh, the engine likes bishop b6 first, but okay, bishop g7, check, and now he like knight f4 is a bit weird not to play. So he goes knight f3, castles, and now the point, of course, is that rook e8 is coming. So if... Uh, like if you play rook e8 here, the point is that after castles, this move is a possibility, and this is rather a annoying. And you can see that this uh, pawn will come under heavy fire. White basically loses a pawn eventually, the central d pawn, and he doesn't have the bishop pair. So no wonder this was so bad. But here actually white started to recover because now the knight on e3 makes a lot of sense. Especially with the rook not coming to e8, so it's a strong knight now, preventing some uh, some key jumps for this bishop. But now he opens up the position for, <laughs> like, basically in black's favor because black has the bishop pair, and he's not really justified in taking these pawns. So now it's just an open position with uh, black having the bishop pair. Now some uh, maneuvers go on here, like of course this isn't even lost for white, but now he just loses an, uh, an exchange after a 5, blundering the rook. So just loses an exchange, and even still here he had some chances with bishop a2, creating some uh, some uh, counterplay on the, on the e6 square, but it wasn't to happen. And now here of course like you can't take because of an eventual rook c1 picking up the bishop. And I think here the conversion was clear. No, it wasn't actually, but alright. Yeah, g4 of course is strange as well. Now, to be fair, uh, Sharif was rated... Uh, like he hasn't... I think he quit chess for 15 years or something. So, uh, it's understandable he's still... Uh, he still hasn't gotten back in the mood of it. And uh, yeah, this game. Ah, yeah, this was a Sicilian um, Grand Prix attack. 
and uh, Sirso played so well. Like you guys have to see this. He defended so well. So gets the normal setup against the Grand Prix. Not normal, but one of the setups against the Grand Prix. Gets the knight to d4, and now here he gets d5. And after d5, he gets d3. So very precise play. Just he gets the normal position in the in the Sicilian uh, Grand Prix, and he starts rolling his pawns forward, opening up the center, getting the bishop into the game, and it's just game over from here, basically, <laughs> against Cerso. And rook f3 going into the pin, is uh, the fork is kind of strange. And here, yeah, you, you guys can check out the graph. Here, what happened eventually? Ah, oh, yeah, the queen got trapped basically now. So still perhaps defensible if you're an engine, <laughs> but after queen c5 it's no longer defendable even if you're takes and trying uh, sacrificing a piece so as to not lose the queen and it's just over. This will be brutal. So just a splendidly played game by uh, Sirsu. And Giorgio Kalust against uh, Karim Masarani, who's the son of, uh, of Mahmoud. Now here, by the way, the, we get to see a Tarash. Usually against the Tarash you just take, play g3. This offers a stable and long-term advantage. And a bit even more than a stable advantage. But of course, playing e3 is the second most played uh, way to... Uh, the second most, uh, most seen way to, <coughs> to meet the Tarash and it's also completely fine obviously so retaining the central tension and eventually you get an isolated pawn position and Georgiou does well to play knight e5 and start going for some kind of uh, kingside attack and you can see that the bishop here is locked in so it shouldn't be doing too well and bishop d5, an interesting move, uh, giving up the bishop, but uh, yeah, probably uh, actually a bit questionable, giving up the bishop and opening up for this bishop. Yeah, but uh, it has its points, of course, retaining the strong knight here. Mm. All right. Ah, now it gets into a positional. <laughs> Not really a positional struggle even, right? There wasn't much of a struggle here. <laughs> just a uh, black blunder. Like he just traded all of his pieces and went into <laughs> a good knight versus bad bishop position. Alright. And yeah, now you get the active rooks. And you can see here after knight a2 as well. Yeah, this just collapses rather quickly. For Karuni, But it doesn't work of course because rook c8 pins the rook. So that's why you play here. And now the for Karuni is... Uh, threatened so you have to lose a pawn and another pawn and that's all she wrote Nadia against Tari so uh, Nadia played reasonably well here we have a Nimzu in the end Tari plays everything and he plays everything aggressively so keep that in mind so here of course the position is just fine you have the bishop pair Oh yeah, what, what? There was a blunder here. <laughs> Why didn't Tari play that? That's just a fork. Hmm. I guess he didn't want to face something like this. But why not? Of course, this is just winning. Okay, Tari goes for a5, which is strange. And now, yeah, Nadia is doing alright. But after f5, you start seeing prime time Tari. <laughs> What's the point of f5? Of course, a rook lift. A rover. That's what Tari specializes in. Attacks. So he goes for the attack here, and yeah, there's not much to discuss after that. Precise play. And GG. Alright, next up, 
we have Samer uh, against Adam so a uh, standard looking position for the moment now here d4 is uh, a very uh, <laughs> combative move I have to say and uh, like you have to trust your calculations uh, very well to play this move and actually he does and uh, Adam falls for a trap he thinks he's um, he's trapping Samer but it's actually a Samer who's trapping him so he thinks yeah Queen of six attacking this threatening mate but there should be three defense both <laughs> and black is just down a piece so let's see the conversion here perhaps technically you don't want to get your king to f3 uh, if you're converting a position but actually he gets a very big attack going and game is over uh, oh yeah i like this game adam against uh, adib adam is of course a rising talent as well i think he's nine or ten um, and he actually had a shot here so there was this trap in the Nidorf. Um there's this book sacrifices in the Sicilian I think it includes exactly this if it doesn't I'd be shocked because I think I've seen it there so let's let's go right ahead so this is a normal Nidorf. a6 bishop c4 e6 should be seven rook e1 and here this bishop b7 uh, players of the mora will be familiar with this adam went for queen of three but he had bishop e6 <laughs> a wonderful sacrifice you gained three pawns for the sacrifice piece and the king is in a bad spot and you have some good uh, attacking chances so uh, white is actually not completely winning but white is much better let's say so uh, continue this line of course it's not so easy to win this as white black has their own trump trump cards but it would have been much better than what was played of course we have three knight c6 and so far it's not so bad for white but you can see in these uh, sicilian positions when white black has this strong bishop and the potential to go d5 and again white doesn't have a clear plan that's the problem so I've kind of come to this understanding at the Sicilian, like when you don't have a clear plan, um, you either have to be a positional, <laughs> completely positional genius, which isn't happening, of course, <laughs> you're not Capablanca, <laughs> and uh, or else, and even Capablanca, like if he's facing someone who's maybe like twenty five, if twenty five hundred rated GM playing these kinds of positions, like White just doesn't have a plan these positions, so. Um, if you don't want to play super aggressively against the Sicilian, which you must, um, you, uh, and you want to play something positional, you have to really, really know what you're doing. So here, um, it starts going awry for uh, for white, because just look at what happens, just look. Okay, let's go slowly through this game. Are you noticing something? <laughs> this bishop, it went to h6, then it went to f4. Then went to e3. Okay, on e3 it gained the tempo, but is it really gaining a tempo? And then went to g5. So, wasting a lot of time with the bishop. And that proves to be black's white's downfall. He just loses a pawn. And in this position, losing a pawn like this is just too much. And from here on out, Adib's conversion was quite good. And the bishop gets trapped. He should have played queen a4, of course, to prevent the trapping of the bishop but it does get trapped and there's not much else to discuss all right next up so just need to check how well we're doing on time we're already 50 minutes in okay i need to at least make it less than an hour so let's go so joe playing c4 and going for this kind of setup of course d4 isn't possible because of the rook on e8 and here yeah just want to discuss one thing remember when you get your bishop on e6 remember if you have anything on c5 similarly if you have if you get your bishop to e3 if you have anything on c anything on c4 watch out for a fork this happens a lot in the london system also when you get your bishop out to f4 and your opponent plays e5 and e4 forking your uh, bishop on d3 and your knight on f3 
th these kinds of forks you really need to be careful of. So uh, just loses a piece. And of course Joe's conversion here is going to be quite good. All right, next chapter. A very long game, <laughs> which doesn't occur. <laughs> okay. Um, ah, here was a nice game. Marwan Sharbil, also an upset. Uh, well, not really, actually, because Noor, even though she's under uh, unrated, she is, I think, like 1800 classical. A bit of a weird system to start off. And here you can see like uh, a bit of a strange opening, but still seems reasonable. And now fireworks start occurring though. Fireworks! Look at what Noor does. First takes, alright, winning uh, a pawn. But now she has to deal with this. And yeah, now look at what she does. Instead of playing something like, I don't know, maybe bishop e6 or something. Oh, oh, the rook is attacked. What am I talking about? Um, oh, and the f7. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this is the point. She must have calculated all of this. Like, taking, takes, takes. And yeah, now you have to see that 95 kind of gives you two big problems you, you can't solve. So, you have to sacrifice. And now you have to see this move, which is insane. <laughs> which is insane. The point being, of course, if you avoid this, there's this, which I would have preferred probably. Um, even though the two minor pieces have potential to be quite strong um, but still and also the pawns but still you have an un unopposed bishop so you might have uh, counterplay chances on the queen side uh, on the king side the way this happens though this is just too um, too helpful for black and yeah so she had to see all of the sequence it's insane knight xd4 is insane it's amazing so this sequence as well to win back the the bishop so that's the point of knight f3 uh, to win back the rook i just can't comprehend how this happened and here apparently h4 maybe wasn't great yeah you just need to develop probably because the rooks are still on the board development counts for something it's not a pure bishop end game and now here like yeah this is so passive and here I don't get why c4 was played allowing the bishop some scope instead just getting the king into the game yeah I think that would have been uh, winning actually the engine recommends king f8 we can't see yeah this is just completely winning because the bishop doesn't have any avenues to enter the game instead Noor gives uh, gives the bishop some life here a lot of life actually and this is just a draw now. But another spectacular thing happens now. H5 is a bit strange, putting your bishop, your pawn on the square of the right squared bishop. And now... Yeah! F6! You needed to prevent uh, the bishop coming in at any moment. So... So instead the engine recommends king d4. Bishop g6, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the point is, the king has to stay guarding this pawn, because you always have this. And this is just a draw. Whoops. But instead of 6 you're giving your, uh, your opponent some targets. And here... Um, yeah, this is good. Yeah, here she should have just played king e6, intending to go like this and escort the pawn eventually. So we can actually see this from the engine's main line because white can't. Like, what can white do? So how d does he stop these two pawns? Um, he either has to put the bishop somehow here and prevent the pawn like this, or he has to go with the king here. So if he goes with the king there. The king just comes in from the other side and uh, it's going to be winning. You're just going to promote, then pick up this pawn and you sacrifice your bishop for this pawn. And uh, check. 
h4, right, so king e6. And if you try to play something like this, I just come in anyway. And you have to play here, I guess, to prevent this. And then I just go like this. So, she had a chance to win. But unfortunately, she just gave up the pawn, basically. And... Uh, yeah, because of this tactic, which she might have not seen. Had it not been for this tactic, of course you can't take because of promotion. I think white would have been lost. So, yeah, not easy to see, but yeah, it, it made more sense to just not push a pawn, right? So always just, uh, in the end game retain your options. Especially uh, this... Uh, so you can see here, like, white's mistake was pushing a pawn. And black's mistake was pushing a pawn. So in these opposite colored bishop and games, you have to be careful of that. Okay, next up. We have Jawad against Kate. So Kate plays a reasonable uh, Tara. She gets the um, isolated queen's pawn. But now white just has, black just has too much pressure. And I've played similar positions as black. So you have to be careful of that. And yeah, e3 comes in. And here, like, queen e1 is more natural, of course. Getting out of the pen, but bishop e1. And she just blunders the queen. She had to take here. This just traps the queen. Amazing bishops. And the game is over. Let's zip right through. And Yander promotes to a rook. Okay, Ignatius against Sky was very interesting because Sky is six years old, by the way. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, she plays. Uh, actually, Ralph goes for this kind of uh, <laughs> like a professional opening, yeah, <laughs> this kind of Morphe stuff. Um, yeah, but eventually he's able to drum up a. Queen, uh, kingside attack. Now this knight of five is a cute move. Of course, the point being, if uh, if you take here, you just take like this and win a piece. So it's a cute move. And here you threaten mate and then win the bishop. And now you have kingside attacking chances, which is what he goes for. But what's funny here is that he should have played e6. To have scope here, but instead he thought he was mating like this. But actually, black has a stunning defense and a piece configuration. Honestly, I've never seen before. So this looks completely winning. But now you see, okay, first gets the the bishop out with b4, and now this. What's this? <laughs> What's this? This is completely preventing these two mates. So of course, like the point here is this. Uh, yeah, I mean, Queen H7 is a direct threat, but imagine if there were um, something defending. Uh, whoops. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay, you get my point. Like, the Queen takes H7 sacrificial idea with Rook H3, right? Like, here, this is already. Uh, it's not a threat because the Queen is here. So, yeah, that's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> So imagine something like this, like this would be a mate threat. But the thing is the queen is here, so actually white ends up losing material in material. <laughs> yeah. And even more actually because the bishop is attacked. Just as an aside. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's amazing how this knight of eight rook g8 completely like you can't the only way for you to get in would be to play something like this. Then you're threatening mate. But that seems so far off and doesn't happen. She just wins a pawn. She just wins a pawn. And unfortunately she blunders like all of these defensive resources. Maybe she was short on time here. She blunders a full exchange for no good reason. And of course the position is just lost now. And uh, yeah, Ralph does a good job. Yeah, but <laughs> just this blunder is so surprising, right? Like, she played so well. Yeah, she's six years old, though. Taking here. 
she instead could have played this and then <laughs> Ralph wouldn't have been happy <laughs> yeah so amazing game by uh, six-year-old sky then we have Peter against Nadim we'll zip right through this wasn't anything special this game yeah just king comes to e2 for yeah attacking purposes but it's over optimistic of course and then just castles and yeah this was very strange maybe he thought he had this missing this yeah and and actually on the 21st board we have a quite a strong game here um, Ronald against Michael both I think would I would rate them as 1900 and classical but Ronald unfortunately he doesn't uh, play the Skarukan very well here of course just knight takes e and uh, e takes f6 or g takes f6 you've seen me play this a lot on my channel but yeah going for knight g3 is kind of questionable and c5 is of course a good move you'd never want to take because of this so just a poorly played Karukan here and queen d2 again giving up on e3 just like uh, the Amr Antoine game but the Amr Antoine game black wouldn't have been better uh, white would still retain a slight advantage here black would be basically winning <laughs> so uh, yeah but he doesn't play that for some reason and now they go into an end game where white is actually maybe even fine because of bishop b5 check and then you can later play some knight e2 um, but he goes greedy and takes the pawn of course blundering something like this now he may have calculated that that happens which is true but just e6, king e7 and now you don't have this trick and uh, g6 is coming no way to prevent that problem is this knight is completely unprotected and like if you protect it how is this knight going to move so completely without any squares and yeah white is just lost here the engine suggests some way to give up the piece in better circumstances like d5 but yeah that's not going to change much and yeah let's go quickly alright ah actually yeah there were chances yeah now I remember yeah there were chances here because of this craziness alongside these past pawns like such a crazy position black should have prevented this of course here not trading just keep the rook because you have two rooks and one rook so you don't want to um, lose your own uh, the own power of your own rook if that makes sense you can read more about this in larry kaufman's piece on uh, material imbalances very important piece for a chess player to know basically all you need to know when you have a kind of a piece like a rook this is a kind of a piece you don't want to lose this piece because white has two rooks if they lose one rook they still have another kind of a piece but you by losing this rook you're losing one kind of a piece and i'm going to say kind again <laughs> uh, people who watch impractical jokers know uh, maybe this uh, clip from sal ninja <laughs> yeah so if you lose the, this kind of a piece it's uh, problematic because your remaining pieces are slow as well the two minor pieces you want a fast paced piece like a rook of course the bishop isn't slow but like the rook is faster <laughs> so yeah this was black's mistake and here the engine like it changes its opinion of course it's unclear i haven't analyzed this maybe uh, it could be a topic for deep analysis of course but again don't want to make this video seven hours long now kind of fun that it got to this stage and actually michael mated with bishop at night which is amazing i don't think i would have been able to <laughs> uh, yeah he did a very good job of mating with bishop at night and i bet they were in time pressure so that's uh, that's amazing and we have Sally against Aymad Berbere. 
Yeah, here the mistake was just giving up the bishop pair for no reason against the Philidor esque position. And uh, yeah, apparently there were some chances by opening up the queen side, but I can't expect much here. Sally, I think, is 10 years old or something, so her much experienced opponent will know how to play. Um, and get the win eventually. Now knight f5 is, shows good understanding, even though the engine <laughs> doesn't like it for whatever reason. But um, she definitely understands squares uh, reasonably well. But yeah, the just giving up the bishop pair was the downfall here. We have Serge against Muhammad Hassoun playing the Vienna. And yeah, here um, what happens is um, Muhammad Hassoun just plays in a very typical fashion. Of someone who uh, doesn't know how to deal with King's Gambit esque positions, so this becomes similar to the King's Gambit accepted. Here, playing this bishop b4, allowing bishop takes f4, and uh, pinning the knight for no good reason. This all is uh, works for uh, works in White's favor, and we can see here just a normal attack. Yeah, it's a bit weird to take here. Like, why not play something like this? But I guess Serge was just playing uh, quickly. Of course, uh, the win was never in doubt. Yeah, just wins the night and eventually the game. And again, under promotion to a rook. <laughs> Everyone is doing it in this round. And here it was an interesting game where we get to see a hippo-esque setup. Um, actually, it's a proper hippo by Bedrosian and white going for the full center and black starting to attack on the king's side. But they agree to a draw here, which is very unfortunate. Of course, they have their own reasons. I'm against the draw offer in principle. Um, but yeah, they have their own reasons. But uh, it promised to be a very exciting game. Like... The hippo, the most provocative opening against a full kind of attack by white, and black gets an attack on the ki king side where white is castled, where black is not. So, it could have been a very, very nice game. But anyway, it did not occur. And here we have uh, against uh, Anthony. Now, yeah, white just gets a bishop pair, and Ro uh, playing well to get uh, this, uh, this queen side expansion and starting to play there. Now f3 of course I don't like, um, perhaps better was just this, so that you can meet bishop h3 with bishop h1, a standard idea, especially for Pierce players, but that did not occur, and here actually I really like this game, um, because here, okay it was equal here, but now uh, she plays this, understanding that the king and pawn endgame is winning. So that's very very well uh, played by Ru'a, but now she blunders something later on, here she understands the position obviously, now she blunders this, not seeing that uh, like this pawn, this pawn isn't enough to win. So here of course, um, yeah later we can, of course here you just go king e5 or king e4. And uh, um, yeah, you're just faster to pick up uh, the pawn. So this, this, I should have put this because I'm going to waste time and putting it. Yada 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 yada. Yada. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so you get the point. Um, but she did this. And now the problem is... Not this, but this! <laughs> and of course here you can't win. Either this occurs or this occurs. And you trap the own, your own king. So... He did not uh, know this, Anthony, and he lost the game. Unfortunate for Anthony, but uh, Roa also showed some good understanding. Now, had yeah, he played a very nice game against the 
the Duras Gambit, which is of course the worst way to play against E4. Um, actually, some people say the Grob is the worst, the reverse Grob, the Borg G5 is the worst way. It's debatable. <laughs> or uh, B5. What the uh, B5 doesn't even have a name, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's questionable which one is the worst. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, so the Duras Gambit, and he plays a very smart system. He plays this, this, and he doesn't hold on to the pawn, but instead jettisons the pawn and goes for quick development. So that's very smart and wonderfully played. So bishop d7, black is preparing to win back the pawn, but hey, he's wasting time. So do we care? No, we don't. Amazing understanding. I really like this also, rook e1. Even though the engine gives us the dubious mark, ah, shut up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just uh, just getting some nice pressure going on here. And you can see here later h6 weakening further these Lito squares. So um, so he does this and gets a strong attack going. And just look at knight g6. How creative is that? He just takes. <laughs> it's so nice. So nice. And here, and look at this, look at this guys, look at this, <laughs> seeing the mate in two, white resigned, he, uh, black resigned here, but yeah, the mate is coming, so very nice, alright, so, um, oh, we made it to an hour and 11 minutes, okay, <laughs> yeah, I know, it's. Uh, I just can't be quicker than this, I need to explain some things, and I hope you guys will get something out of me explaining these things. So uh, I do this uh, for you guys. <laughs> so I uh, hope you got something out of this video. We'll be back with round two. Um, round two, will sh I think I will show two deeply analyzed games and we'll try to go quicker <laughs> in the other games. But uh, retain the educational content. All right, guys. So thank you for watching and take care.